Hey, Bass Geek here, and today I'm going to show you what I spent my money on at the Raleigh Expo. Okay, before we get started here, I've got a couple of announcements to make. This coming up weekend from i think it's like thursday so whatever the 23rd of january is i believe right in there whatever thursday falls on I, I don't remember anyway so like this weekend i will be in knoxville tennessee at the uh east tennessee fishing show i'll be there with my buds from trc unfortunately ledgehead isn't going to be able to make it this year uh, I hate that they're not going to make it. I've been down there every single year with Ledge Head. Love their heads. So if you get a chance, make sure you go out and you check out the Ledge Head Swim Baits and Underspin. There is, as always, a discount code in the description below. Uh, but I will be there with TRC. You'll be able to get some good deals if you can't make it out. Of course, as always, there's links to everything in the description below. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then... I will be at the Augusta County Bass and Outdoors Expo February 15th and 16th. I believe it is for that. I'll be doing a Domeki Rig seminar in Augusta. That is in Fishersville, Virginia. So make sure you come up there, guys. Look it up. February 15th and 16th. Got to give two more shout-outs. Shout One is to Outdoors Weekly, my boy Bryce. Now, you guys may know him because he magnet fishes a lot. Uh, met him two years ago down in Raleigh, and I want to say, Bryce, thanks for being such a cool dude. Uh, he's got a way bigger channel than mine, and he's just he's just a cool dude, man. Just fun to hang out with. Thank you, Bryce. The other channel I want to give a big shout-out to is my guys down at Slab Dynasty. Now, they're a new and up-and-coming YouTube channel. Make sure you go check them out. They're based out of that kind of Raleigh-Durham area. Make sure you go look them up, guys. They make some really cool videos. And uh, they were pretty pretty cool to hang out with, too. So make sure you go check out both those channels. They are pretty pretty good people, man. Just uh, happy that I got to spend uh, a little bit of the weekend with them down there in Raleigh. If you haven't been to the Raleigh Expo, make sure you uh, you check it out next year. The expo seems to be growing by leaps and bounds. And uh, it was a pretty good time. I had a pretty good time down there. All right. So now I know you want to see. This is what you tuned in for. You want to see what I actually spent my money on. So let's talk about it right here. First thing in my hand. It's actually two products. So, of course, I got me a TRC cover to go over the rod that I purchased. Now guys, if you watched the last video, and if you watched last year's video, you'll notice that I did an interview with a company called Fish Sticks. Now, it's one thing to look at a rod and, and, and think you know a little bit about it. Let the salesperson tell you. But the great thing about working these expos is I get to meet the people before they're ever trying to sell me anything. And so I met the owner of Fish Sticks. I met him last year, but I really heard him talking to a few people about just kind of the history of fishing rods and, and different types of blanks. And you guys know I'm a geek. I'm not going to be able to do justice to the things that I heard him say, but I was very, very impressed with his take on the different styles of blanks um, how they're used, how they're set up, what they do, what they're best for. And so I had to at least go get one of these and put them in my hand. Now they make custom rods for you and you know, they'll make anything you want. That's the great thing about a custom rod company. Now custom doesn't always mean expensive guys. That's the one thing you have to think about. You can get cheaper rods made for you, but you know, you can get, you know, as they said in the last video, maybe the handle, you want it shorter or you want it longer. Or maybe you don't like a split grip like this and you want a solid cork or 
you know, a foam handle. You want guides a certain way, certain types split apart. Uh, you're looking for a specific type of action. And that's the great thing, and that's that's a big deal. You know, fishing, you sort of graduate as you get older and as you learn more and more about the sport. And so what you end up learning is that you like things a certain way. Now, you know, you, you can go out and buy any fishing rod you want, but, you know, you begin to learn you want more of this feel, less of that feel, and you want the handles a certain way. And, and you know, not always production company rods don't always have that custom setup for you, so you can't go and have them made. Now, all that being said, this is a spinning rod that I picked up. This is the freshwater fish sticks version. This is the medium. It's a seven foot medium fast action. This is the SB841 seven foot. And what I'm gonna use for this, it's got a really nice, really nice backbone, really fast tip. And so this is gonna be another Domeki, a drop shot, that sort of uh, setup for me. Uh, there's a lot of times when I like to have a couple different sizes of Domeki rigs tied on or drop rigs tied on. And in that drop rig, I like to have a couple different colors. So this is going to fit the bill. Uh, I've got some loose reels on the way to pair up with this. So I can't wait to get this out on the water and really put it through its paces with some big, deep smallmouth. Again, I'll have links to everything in the description below so you can go check out these products and these companies on your own. Now, you'll also know that at the past, the, the past two years, I've been looking at and trying different lines. Uh, you know, I use Seaguar a lot, nothing wrong with Seaguar. Uh, they tend to go on sale a lot and that's kind of why I use them. Is it the best line for the things that I do? Not always. Uh, I've used P-Line. I've used, you know, of course, your Berkeley and your, um, you know, whoever else, your Sun Line. Uh, picked up some Canine Line last year, and I really like it. But like I said, over the past couple of years, I've really been kind of just testing different lines to see what I like and what suits my style of fishing better. And a line that I'd never actually used was Gamma. And it was kind of the same thing that happened. I'm down in Raleigh, and just so happens, Dale, the owner of Gamma, is standing over to the side, and he's talking with somebody, and he's talking about, you know, the molecular makeup and the special process that they do specifically to their line that gives it, you know, makes it more supple, it makes it uh, stronger, uh, you know, and again, I'm not going to be able to do justice to the conversation that I had over a week ago with him, but it was just really interesting. And again, being a geek, you know, that's the sort of stuff that I love to hear out of owners. I love to hear that they have really put in a ton of thought and a ton of of research into their products that always piques my interest in. I know that if you're that type of person, that you're going to really, really dig in and learn your craft. And I think that's both what's happened with fish sticks and talking to Gamma. So just to test it out, I picked up four different types of Gamma Edge. Now, you know, basically I went from, you know, the low the six pound test, some of the smallest stuff that I'm gonna throw. Like I said, this is 100% fluorocarbon. You guys know that I'm a big fluoro guy. The eight pound test jumped up to the 14. The 14 is gonna be something that I'm gonna throw my swim baits on. You know, I generally throw 14 to 15 and 20 pound test. I do a lot of flipping with 20 pound test. I throw a lot of A rigs on 20 pound test. Um, you know, throw a lot of jigs on 20 pound test, period. Uh, so I'm really jacked up because I was just so impressed with Dale. Dale Black is the owner and uh, some of the stuff that he was talking about. So any of you guys that's used Gamma out there, let me know what you think about it. 
but uh, one of the things that he really said that just kind of stuck in my craw was, you know, guys are generally happy with the rods they're using, you know, happy with the reels and the baits, but most guys, when you talk to them about line, they're kind of like, eh, they can, you know, take it or leave it. And so, you know, he's trying to put together a line that people are really excited about. And when he said that, that really stuck in my crawl. So, so I'm, I'm really, really excited to get out and try the Gamma and put it to the Bass Geek test. So here's two baits that I seen and immediately knew that I had to pick up a couple just to try them out. Now, during the winter, or late winter, early spring, especially where I live, just as the fish begin to move up, as the water begins to raise, before the, the and, and even into spring, you know, the balsa wood, flat-sided balsa wood baits are a big deal and have been a big deal in my area for a very long time. They're also a big deal on the Tennessee uh, River lakes during the, the winter time. These two are not balsa wood, but they are very much the same style of baits. And I'm gonna pop these out for you so that I can kind of show you. Great looking bait. That's kind of a brown, orange crawl. You know, got that circuit board uh, bill. This bill is actually made out of California redwood. And this one is the MC1. This is by a company called Catching Concepts, uh, quality redwood crankbait. So I'm really excited to see what the difference between that balsa bait and that redwood bait is, see the rise difference, uh, see how they dive, the difference in the action. But that is a, that's a beautiful, beautiful bait. Picked up another one, now this one, is the six to eight foot diver diver this is the ripping c1 good looking color here for let's say smallmouth got that purple got a little bit of sartreuse in there really good looking color a little bit of you know fade from a really a blue got that bluegill pattern and again, that's a redwood, that's a six to eight foot diver. And you can see how thin that is. Really great paint jobs. So I'm really, really excited to see what these little baits are going to do for me. Guys, you've heard me talk about these a hundred times. And that is the Shane's Baits. This is, I'll, I'll get to this one next. But this is their finesse. This is their fifth element. And this is one, guys, that I was telling you all about. Some of you bank anglers. And what I love about them is, I mean, look how small that is. So, you know, you can bend these out. And, I mean, these blades are, you know, this is a very small A-rig. So you can use this from the bank. Now, one thing about them fishing an A-rig from the bank. Now they do make their own heads and they make some really small heads. One of the things that I would recommend you do is A, use very light belly weight hooks. If you're throwing an A-rig from a bank, so very, very lightweight, but definitely weedless hooks, so belly weighted hooks, or just use a heavy wire EWG. And what that will do is keep those smaller swim baits killed out for you and don't put any weight at all on it. And you can really cast this thing with that style setup in super lightweight or super uh, shallow water, you know, with, uh, you know, with a, a medium heavy rod or, or a, a, a good heavy uh, pitching and flipping rod or a frogging rod. But you can get away with a medium heavy with this type of thing. And again, this is the Shane Bates fifth element. Now they've got the finesse, which has no blades on it. If you're not fishing around a lot of cover, if you're not fishing around, you know, a lot of grass, um, look at that finesse uh, A-Rig. I don't remember what they call it, but it's got no blades on it, especially if you're around that clear water. 
Now this little puppy, this is the Blades of Glory. The Blades of Glory has gotten a lot of press. And I can't wait to get out here and throw this. Basically, you can see it is a chandelier. It is two A-rigs that have been connected. So what you're going to do with this is you're going to put dummy heads here. So no hooks here. And then depending on your state, like in Virginia, I can put, you know, five hooks down here at the bottom. In Virginia, I can put hooks on all these. But now if I were to go to Tennessee, of course, I would just grab the bottom three there and put hooks on it. So that is the fifth element. You know, Shane's baits, they make very light A-rigs. You know, I'm really excited about getting this out and throwing it around for some smallmouth. You know, I think the the more uh, flash, the more, um, you know, baits you have on there, the more drawing power an A-rig has. That's why in the early days you would see guys just string together three, four, five of these pups and go out there and sling them with basically what are equated to salt gear you know, rods. But these are all baits that pique my interest. Now, when we're talking about guys that can talk about their baits, and you can really see the passion and the love and that, that original design. One of the areas that it's hard to see original design is in the jig game anymore. If you guys have seen my videos, you know that when it comes to jigs, the God's honest truth is there's not a much there's there's not that much originality. But when I run across this gentleman, and I had several of you guys recommend that I go talk to him, and again, he was that guy where I'm not gonna do justice to his product. He will be in Knoxville, I know for a fact. So if you're out there, go by his booth and talk to him. Even if you don't understand some of the stuff that he's talking about, just listen at the passion and the work that he's put and the thought that he's put in the design of these jigs and these jig heads that I'm about to show you. It's those guys that are really making the fine tweaks to the products we fish with all the time that's gonna set your bite to land ratio apart. It's those custom paint jobs, those custom lures, those guys that really have a passion about the products that they're making, that's going to increase your hookup and your land ratio. And so the very first thing I'm going to talk about is actually his shaky head. Now, guys, I'm a huge, huge believer in rattles on a jig. I love rattles on a jig. Most of the guys I know don't throw rattles on a jig, but I like rattles on a jig. And this is the first time, I'm sure there's probably somebody else out there that does it, but this is the first time I've ever seen rattles on a shaky head. Actually built into the shaky head, this is called the bed head. He actually uh, debuted this at iCast earlier in the year. So it's got the swinging screw lock on there. The other great thing about that is let's say you want to use some Z-Man, some Elastic. The great thing is you can pop that off put on a little stick pin keeper and you can easily get elastic baits up on there without having to fight them. Or you can even kind of cut that wire, straighten it out. I know I haven't showed you guys that trick yet. One day I will. And that way you don't have to try and screw that elastic up on there because we all know trying to screw elastic onto a screw head can be so much fun. But anyway, I'm a big screw lock guy. So this is Moccasin Lures. This is the 3 8 ounce. Now he puts a five alt hook in there, which I like because I like to fish the bigger shaky heads. To me, the farther that hook can go up, the better it's gonna have the, the hookup ratio. And I love, again, I love the fact that all of these have the rattles. I picked up two packs of these and he's got them in green or black as far as the heads go. These are the quarter ounce. Guys, listening to this man talk about the design of the shaky head and what else I'm about to show you. And he's got, uh, he's got some Arky style heads to have. Man, when he went over those are impressive. Now, I didn't pick none up, but I do plan on it. He's, 
he's really won me over. Now, I haven't gone and fished these yet, but one of the things that I was looking for at the show, because I'm running extremely low on, are my finesse jigs. Now, guys, when he talked about the finesse jig, I'm telling you, everything from the size of the weed guard, how the uh, size of the silicone, the skirt material, is half the width of most skirt material, the shape of the head, how the hook points toward the eyelet, just a ton of stuff that, you know, he went over. And I'll just tell you, these things, they're, they're beautiful. I mean, I really, really love them. And so what I did, that's a 7 16th. I picked up a little heavier so that, you know, we can fish them out deeper. You know, I mean, that's kind of where I live. Picked them up in a couple of different colors. That's the mud bug, 7 16 out finesse jig. This is the melon. This is a 5 16 ounce finesse jig. And this is the Texas pumpkin. I will promise you, I'll be picking up more of these jigs when I get to Knoxville. Guys, make sure you go check out Moxkin Lures. The guy just is, I mean, he's an impressive guy to talk to. You know, if you want to have your head explode when you talk about uh, just anything and everything that's going to make a better jig, go talk to that man. He is impressive. So the next thing, I knew I needed to find me some spinner baits. And I wasn't necessarily looking for these spinner baits, but when I found this size spinner bait, I got really happy. So if any of you all have ever seen me talk about a spinner bait, that's probably one of the videos that I've neglected you guys on uh, forever. I need to do a spinner bait video. It's one of my very favorite baits to throw. Uh, it's probably one of the first baits I ever threw. Uh, they had a jig and a, and a worm, honestly. And so you'll know that I live and fish very clear water and very steep banks. So most of the time when I'm throwing a spinner bait, unless I just know they're up super shallow, 90% of the time I'm throwing a three quarters to a one ounce jig or one ounce spinner bait. Sorry, listen to me. Got jigs on the brain. So the reason why I do that is because when I throw that spinner bait up there shallow, when you come off three foot, you know, you're three to five foot deep already. So you come off the bank 10 foot, you're as much as 15 to 100 feet deep. So I like to contour the bank a lot of times. And a lot of times what I really like to do is throw these I'll throw it on, on about anything that is a, a wind-blown point. But a lot of times, the key factor to that is finding those areas that they can ambush, which means blowdowns or lay down trees that are on or in those areas that have some wind pushing into them. And so when you throw that spinnerbait up there, a lot of times what I'll do is give it a couple quick turns, like a bait fish fleeing, and then I'll slowly let it begin to contour and I'll reel very slowly as it contours that lay down, contours that tree. And a lot of times that'll call up those big bass into biting. Now, most time you get a three quarters or a one ounce spinnerbait, they're living large, kind of like me, if you know what I mean. Well, the first thing that drew me to this booth was the actual paint jobs, not necessarily on the heads, but the blades. Now, let me pick one out here and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now, I don't know if you can see this. Of course, I'll get a close up to it. But if you look at that blade, it's got some purple flake in it. And that, to me, is huge. It's not just a standard silver blade or gold blade coming through the water. Love a little bit of extra flash a little bit of color because when they see these what they're thinking is that it's a group of bait fish so a lot of times that blade is a big deal now the other thing that i really like is how compact guys this is a one ounce spinner bait 
and look how compact it is. I mean, that that is just so small. And what they do is they run the weight down the shank of the hook. So I'm really excited to see. Now I am wondering what that's going to do to the trailer because a lot of times I like to put 90% of the time, guys, if I'm putting a trailer, I'm either just going to put a trailer hook on. If I get a lot of short strikes, 90% of the time, I like, like with this one, I may put just a regular old grub on it. So I'm going to be really interested on how far I can get up over that and if I'm going to need to super glue that down. But the blades, how compact it is. Another thing is the blade comes just barely past the hook shank. So, you know, I like, I like them to stay as close to that hook because you don't get nippers on there without getting them hooked a lot of times. But if we put a, um, you know, a, a trailer hook, we'll get them all the time. But sometimes when I'm throwing it through that wood, but I like this compact design. I like that the blade is real close to the hook. And I think in clear water with, whether it be a heavy overcast early in the morning or a little bit of wind, I think these are gonna pay off for me, especially this spring. Hopefully it's gonna be something that they haven't seen and even when it comes to the smallmouth. Now, I love painted blades also, especially when I'm around smallmouth. And so I did pick up a couple now these are my shad colors right here, but those white blades even have that, that kind of purple flake in it. Now here's one just for my smallmouth, my spotted bass buddies. This one right here, and look at the blades on that, so beautiful. Guys, ask my buddy Joey, he'll tell you, when, it, when the water dirties up just a little bit and you're around smallmouth and spots, Pull out the pink. Pull out the pink. Now here's one. This one's got a little bit of hair. I've been rough on this one. It's got a little bit of hair weaved into it. And this is a nice purple color. Got purple on the blades too. Don't know if you can see that real well. Of course, you've always got to have your sartreuse and white. And again, got some sartreuse, some white. Great looking blades, guys. I mean, it's it's almost like a, I mean, that that blade color is so impressive on this. It's almost like a sexy shad on the blade. And then here is one. He was sold out of the ounce, so I got this one in the uh, three quarters ounce. And you can see here, again, he's got a very light gill pattern on the blade. And I'm just telling you, Guys, I'm, I'm extremely excited to throw these, and these are all by a company called uh, Spot Sticker Baits, so make sure you go out and you check out. Again, I'll have all their information in the bottom, uh, but Spot Sticker Baits is who makes these. They make a bunch of others, so I'm really, really, really excited to get a chance to get out here and throw these this coming spring. Love to throw some uh, some spinner baits. Haven't thrown a spinner bait in such a long time. You know, I've I've kind of kind of let my spinner bait game wane just a little bit, and hopefully we're gonna get that a little better. Now, these I can't take credit for finding. I had one of my subscribers come up and bring these to me. I want to say thank you for that. But I'm really interested in the boot tail on these, and I'm wondering how big he actually makes these. These are Deep Creek lures, and this is their bait fish. Now this is in baby bass, but the thing that most impresses me about this, as I, I want to take this out, is, you know, number one, this is gonna to be, to me, a great very slow winter time style um, swim bait. And I mean, the boot, there's so much material in that boot. And I mean, if you look at it, it really, it really looks like a boot. 
It reminds me more of the boot tails that are kind of on some of your big trout swim, soft plastic swim baits. So I'm really interested in throwing this bait. I just think it's got a very unusual makeup. I've never seen anything like that. Um, I'm also really wondering as far as like castability, you know, if you cast this real hard, like how well is that big heavy, um, heavy weight going to hang up, you know, because you've got a lot of material here, a lot of material here and, and where it connects to that tail, not a lot of material. For me, I feel like I'd be, I could really sling that off, but, uh, so I'll have to be careful, uh, casting, but I can't wait to give this a try and see what it looks like in the water. Like I said, I really think that would be great in the wintertime when you just sling it out there, put it on about an ounce lead head, ledge head, and just slowly work it. I think that tail is going to have a nice big kick to it. Now, last but not least, I bought some of these last year. I fell in love with them. And a video that I want to do for you guys, especially about this bait, uh, hopefully I can get out and actually get some fishing done once we get these shows over with. But, uh, you know, this is from uh, Z-Boss, the Azumas. So this is the Heavy Z. I need to pick up some more of these. What's great about this is that it's a half ounce body, but it is a three quarter ounce lipless crankbait now this was the only one i picked up because i had to replace it this is the olive oil color and again these are by profound outdoors now some other colors some other baits i didn't pick these up last year i don't know if they were making them or not but these are kind of in the same realm as wiggle warts or rock crawlers or that style of bait and they've made a, they make a couple of colors that I thought was incredible. Now here's the six to 10 diver, six to 10 foot diver. This is called the Boss Hog. And that color is White River Magic. It is a very translucent sort of uh, watermelon crawl color, which is one of my very favorite colors in the world. This is this is a color that I just seen and I had to pick up. It's I just think that the smallmouth will crush this color, and I don't know that the camera's going to do it much good. But this is the Clearwater Perch, and it's got you know some green. It yeah, it's 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 kind of a perch design, but it could very easily be a a, a baby bluegill color too. It's got some, you know, some sartreuse in it. Really good looking color. Again, those are the Boss Hogs. This is the smaller version of the Deep Diver. So this is the Z Boss. This is a six to 10 diver. And this is kind of in that same color, the White River Magic in the Z Boss. Now this is gonna have a little less wobble to it. So I didn't have any other smaller baits and I figured that is a great place to start this spring. Very translucent kind of that watermelon crawl and uh so I, I really think that's going to be a great place to get started with some of their stuff love their crankbaits and of course guys you know i couldn't walk away without some of the big girls so some of the things that i picked up here's the z boss 25 this is 22 to 27 foot diver this particular color is called the school bus this color the both of these colors uh, they're different but they look very much the same this is the casper shad you guys know i love the translucent colors when i'm throwing a crankbait and the casper shad is very translucent kind of got that tennessee shad color to it, a little bit of a tennessee shad color and uh, some of the Clear Lakes might be throwing that out there to see if we can't get some big, big bites. And here's another version. This is the Gizzard Blue slash Green. And again, these are all in the 22 to 27, the Z-Boss 25s. Uh, 
love the way they package their stuff love love the look of their stuff they make some daggone good looking crankbaits and believe you me they work all right guys that is it for what i actually spent my money on in raleigh so i felt like i come away with a pretty good haul i uh, got to meet a lot of people and got to have a great time down there. So like I said, make sure you're coming out starting tomorrow. So I don't even know what today is, but I think it's the 23rd through the 28th or something like that. Thursday through Friday, January, come out and see me down at Knoxville at the East Tennessee Fishing Show. Come down there and see me. I'm gonna be there with TRC. And of course I'll be walking around checking out products. Then make sure you come to the Augusta County, February 15th and 16th. Uh, it's in Fisherville, Virginia, Augusta County, Virginia, and it's the Bass and Outdoor Show. Guys, make sure you come up there because I will be doing a seminar on how to do Mickey rig. Now, as always, go out and show these companies some love. Uh, I can't wait to test them and get some reviews in and tell you what I think about these baits. Guys, you already know what I think about the uh, Azumas, the Profound Outdoor Baits, I bought them two years in a row. And I'll, I'm a big fan of them. They're, they're going to be in my arsenal for quite a long time. All that being said, tell me if you've used any of these products. Tell me if I missed a product. If you're from down the Raleigh Way or at the Expo, if I missed something, tell, give them a shout out down in the comment section down below. And uh, tell me what they are. I can still always go look them up. And maybe even if they're up at Knoxville, I'll go check them out. As always, questions and comments in the comment section below. Like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you guys ring that bell so you get these notifications. Watching these videos helps this channel grow immensely. And you guys, you guys rock.